Hi, everyone. Today, to start your weekend off, I got you a really good one. Um, I know that you're going to enjoy this for sure. Um, the source behind this information is me. It was me who discovered everything that I'm about to tell you. Um, and it's interesting because all this went on with, with a, pretty much everybody in the search community, including Sam Smith, not noticing this. I noticed it in 2018, and I made Forrest Fenn aware of the fact that I noticed it. And I'll tell you more about that in a second. So anyway, as we all know, in the early years, Forrest Fenn would use aliases in public forums to try and influence the chase. We wouldn't really give out good hints. He didn't want it to be obvious that it was him, but he would kind of hint on the edge, you know. And when you read these, you'll see that the replies sound like Forrest. I mean, like I said, I can't prove this, but I do have pretty hard evidence. Um, I don't think it could be denied, but I can't prove it. So anyway, how would you like to see an example of how Forrest would do this? I mean, actually, in his text, as close as I can get it. But there's no controversy here. There's nothing controversial that happened. So get your uh, popcorn ready there, folks. We're going to discuss something really fun. And this is going to be part of my tell all that I've been kind of doing. Since Jack won't open his lips and speak, I will. And I don't have the chest, but everything I'm going to put out there, I can back up with solid evidence. This included, but mostly the evidence that I've been talking about in past videos is the stuff that I revealed in the poem with Try to Wheel. And I have more information about Try to Wheel that I've been holding back. But since what happened over the past couple of days regarding the discovery that Jack was on AGK and my discovery that pretty much everything Jack said appeared to be lifted from the same topics that I discussed in 2018. And that's including, and everybody knows this, how to find Forrest Fenn in the thrill of the chase, how to find out where he's alone in the book, to locate the hints. I discussed the hints that were in my war for me, including the, the oxygen buzzer and putting his thumb over Philadelphia. And I also, unlike Jack, related it back to the solution that I know I can't prove it's true, but I have overwhelming evidence. And when you see the video I'm coming out with either tomorrow or the day after, it's going to blow you away because now I'm really mad and now I'm really going to tell all, okay? And I'm going to begin with this first just to get your weekend rolling, you know? And as Cal Lazarus would say, here's the breaking news. I have the balls to say where I got it, and give my name out there as the source. I don't believe we should have anonymous sources because you can't trust an anonymous source. They're probably feeding you a bunch of BS. That's just my opinion. So here we go. Let's. I'm going to show this to you right in the notepad. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the original posts have been wiped out. Okay. And some of them were wiped out by Stephanie and Mindy just over the years. But the ones that, the majority of them that I'm going to show you, a lot of them had to come back from the Wayback Machine because Forrest Fan himself deleted it. Back in um, 2013, I guess Forrest created a user called Mapman51 on Chase Chat. Okay. Well, he did that in 2014. And, and remember that date now, because I got a couple other things I want to tell you about that date. So the first thing I want to tell you is just to give you kind of an upfront. Oh, and by the way, in this video, I'm going to reveal that there is, in fact, a word, at least one word that is key, a word in the poem. Now, um, K-Pro actually has video of Forrest Fenn saying the same thing. So I'm kind of going to back up what she said, and I'm going to show you where Forrest Fenn says it again. And I'm also going to show you the fact that Forrest Fenn, I discovered over research. And again, I don't think anybody noticed this. And Sam did not. But I pointed it out to Sam early in 2019. I'll show you here what happened. So let me give you a little bit of upfront dates, though. 
It was in 2012 when Sam Smith actually started on the chase. And it wasn't until between 2013 and 2014 that Sam Smith and his wife went to the wheel location. In 2013, now, now for, that's the first time it was in 2013 that Forrest Fenn announced and initially said 500 feet of the chest. That was on March 8th, and it was on Metro UK interview. I don't remember the question that he was asked, but Forrest Fenn replied, there have been some people who have been within 500 feet because they told me where they had been. Others have figured the first two clues and then right pa went right past the treasure and didn't know it. Now, like I said, I know Sam Smith went there at that time. And I also know others went there at that time. And although I can't prove this, I think two of them were Stephanie and Dow. They went to the wheel. From 2013 to 2015, obviously there have been a few people that were going to the wheel. So 2014 and 2015 rolls around. It's the first time Forrest Fenn no, lowers that number down to 200 feet. And he did it in a Huffington Post interview. He also made a comment on Jenny's site in August of 2014, but I'm, I can't locate that. But that was the first time he said 200 feet. So, like I said, Sam was there in 20, I don't know, remember what it was, late 2013 or 2014. But so were other people, including Dal and Stephanie. And Sam had told me, if he remembers correctly, that Dal and Stephanie, when they went out that time, they actually left the geocache near the wheel and sam and i actually joked about that when he told me that because i said when we find a chest we'll also get the geocast just to piss off dal and stephanie you know that was just the joke of of course we didn't find a chest but anyway let me go on so about this this map man i'll scroll down in um early 2013 map man creates account on chase chat I want to say something about this because just to keep all these dates going, I started on the chase roughly 2014. And in 2016, I was teamed up with Sam. There was some posts made to me that I think were, were from Forest Friend aliases, but they were made in public. I'm not going to show those. I'm going to focus on the Matt Man one. And one thing I want to point out though is in 2016, I got really mad because Dow's site sucks to be honest with you it was unthreaded you couldn't follow posts you couldn't have a a good discussion so you know me i emailed dal and i told him that i said your, your forum sucks why don't you use real forum software now when i sent that email i see i uh, carbon copied forest fan so forest fan basically ag agreed with me he replied back to me he goes i agree right this was late 2016, probably, I'm guessing now, probably October. All of a sudden, in November or so, Jenny's forums pops up at Mysterious Writings. I wrote an email at Forrest, and I cc Dow, and I said, it's about time. We got a good place to post. So Forrest's friend replied to me, and he goes, yeah, and I hope you guys keep it clean. And he told me, you know, try to, try to, help Jenny keep it clean and get the place started. So I went there as why must I go? <clears throat> and the first thing I started discussing was about the wheel. And I explained that I had different wheel solution than Sam. So Sam and I kind of parted ways and I put down a lot of my research there that I had done. Some of it during when I was parting with Sam, some without. I also sent um, a message to Mike uh, Calazars, and I said to him, I said, it would be nice if you did a video about this. I said, I got all the information here that shows how to do try to, the wheel. Two or three months later, of course, Calazars did a video about it. I didn't do a video, but all my posts were still on Jenny's. They're gone now, but if you look at the videos I uploaded, I actually recorded everything before Jenny deleted it including the dates that I made the post in, in 2016 and 2017. So anyway, Jenny's forums come along, right? And one of the aliases he created, I think, was later on that forum. So let me go on here. 
I, I just started doing, I didn't know about Matt Man 51 at that time. Okay. Sometime in 2018, I started doing some good detective work to find Boris Fenn, you know, see if I could locate any kind of hints or anything or stuff that he posted online. And I did that the same time I was reading Boris Fenn's posts. I wanted to do research him, kind of like I said in my video. If you want to solve, which is, by the way, another thing Jack lifted from me, if you want, if you want to find the answers to the, the uh, clues, you have to think like Forrest Fenn. You got to remove your bias. But you got, but like Sean Dotson and I discussed, you have to be aware of cognitive bias. You have to try to separate subjective and objective evidence that you find in the book. So I told um, Sean Dotson that I was going to do a grammar analysis and break the poem down by, um, you know, sentences, then clauses, then phrases. And I was going to weave all that together and pick up the content, uh, um, the context. And then I was going to try to find a way to use the poem as a table of contents to reference the hints and thrill of the chase. Because unknown to Sean at that time, and I didn't have the video out yet, but I discovered that the first place for his friends alone is on page 23. And you can see my video about that. And I describe how Forrest Fenn liked the sandwiches since between a repeated phrase. And the phrase is different. What he does is different as, as time goes on. But in, in uh, Jump Starting Learning Curve on page 23, the phrase he uses is my name. And he has my name, and then he puts Forrest Fenn, and that's the only place you'll find Forrest Fenn in the book, except for the title and the copyright. And then at the, after that, in the same paragraph, it has my name. No matter what they said and did, they couldn't take away my name. And in the beginning, he said, all I had was my name. Okay. So he treasured his name. That's all he had at that point. So anyway, I was looking for other things that Boris would have said online that I could kind of match up with the book. But I didn't want to stray far from the thrill of the chase. I didn't want to get back to an old habit of looking at scrapbooks and looking at too far to walk, catching a rye, uh, once upon a while, blah, 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 right? Well, once upon a while wasn't even out yet in 2000, mid-2018. <clears throat> anyway, while I was doing that research, I discovered Matt Man 51 And everything he posted seemed to sound like Forrest was talking. So I started digging into it more, and I went through everything that I'm about to show you, and then I, I sent an email to Forrest because I figured, what the heck, I'm going to do this. Because I noticed that Mattman did not log in to Chase Chat for a year. So the last time he logged in was like 2017, okay, if I remember correctly. So this was 2018. So in 2019, early, early, um, I told Forrest's friend that I noticed that he was Mattman, okay? No later than like 15, 20 minutes. Mattman logs in for the first time in a year, and he made one silly post. He said something like, and this was in June, he's like, the solstice is approaching or something like that. Can't wait, you know, for the solstice or something like that. One, one line, that was it. And it was in June of 2019. Then he deleted it. after Because what happened was, after he did that, I replied back to him, and I said, welcome back, Mattman51, and I laughed. Because he didn't say nothing to me, but I knew it was him. I mean, come on. It, it, Matt Man didn't log in in a year, and all of a sudden he logs in no, no later than 20 minutes after I wrote the email. So I'm like, damn it, that's him. So I replied back to him, and I, I laughed. I said, that's you, right? Ten minutes after that, he deleted the post that he made about the solstice. Like, right away. Nobody replied to it. Only ten minutes had gotten by. And he knew that I'd seen it because... I sent that reply back to him. So I think Boris Fenn got nervous at that point, and he logged in that night because I logged in that night to try to capture everything that he said. And what was happening during that time was Matt Man was logged in. There was a green light there, no new posts. But as I was searching, because he had 52 post replies up there, right, over way back since 2013, right, when the Chase Chat's still open. Um, 
and he was slowly deleting them because it was down to like 40 posts. And I'm like, oh, no. So I quickly went through and I captured all of them, right, really fast because I assume Forrest is going along a little bit slower. He was probably on there for a good two hours, okay? He removed as many of them as he could. He left some of them there, and he couldn't delete the account. And a lot of them he couldn't delete because remember that, you know, when when you reply to somebody on um, Chase Chat, it quotes it. And you can't, re and Forrest Friend couldn't delete the Batman 51 quotes because they were somebody else's post. So he had no choice to leave them there. So a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you is still on the way back machine, unless it was removed from there too. And incidentally, while I'm here, the way you do this is you click search and then you, you search by username, Matman 51. And this shows you his registration date. Actually it was 2014. I was wrong. That's how far his posts went back on this site. But he also made one or two posts on Dow's. Anyway, you search by name, it comes back with this. After that, you click on find all posts or find all threads and you'll get a list. And here's the very last one that he wrote. Now, now just, just read this, look at the date. And I, I think this was going on when they were discussing, actually flaming for us about being responsible for the deaths in the chase and they were just giving him a hard time. It should be called off. And um, he replied back to here to uh, Debbie Downer. Okay. And he goes, and now read the street. I mean, you'll see it sounds like Forrest. It's just funny. So, I mean, I'm finding stuff like this, of course, 2017. So I'm like, I'm going to look back. And I started going back. And then, like I said, the posts he had deleted, I grabbed them off the way back. So let's take a look at those now. The first thing I just want to show you people that don't know how to use Google, the way I did it was when you go to Google, you type in site colon, and you can't do this one anymore because Dow site's down, but you type in the, the website you're concerned with and then the phrase that you want to look for. So I did searches for Mapman 51 because I wanted to make sure I found everything because the chase chat search is, is kind of weird. But I did use this in combination with that. And I found roughly 52 posts since 2014 on Chase Chat alone. On Dow's, there wasn't many. He made a comment um, in the uh, Partridge in the Pear Trees post. And then he made another comment to JD. Um, and I don't remember what the topic there was, but it was way back in 2013. Matt Man tells JD, Bonko is also Spanish for the bench. Now, obviously, as you know, Arsav has a bench. So the father on a Banco chapter, you get it right? So immediately I'm looking at that and I'm like, whoa. So I start looking at that. I remember this is back in 2013 and Forrest is writing this stuff as Mattman 51. But he would say stuff like this where he's not really saying anything, you know, that basically you won't understand it unless you're already pretty far along in the chase. And in this context, they were talking about the chapters in the book and where there might be hints in there. Okay. And again, this is some of the stuff that kind of made me start looking deep into the hints. And I talked about this incidentally, also on AGK, how to locate the hints and where Forrest is alone in the book one year before Jack made his phone calls and discussed the same thing to AGK. I'm pretty confident that Jack is well aware of my videos. Anyway, let's move on. Some of these might not mean anything. I'm just showing you to, to try to give you a hint as to how this guy would talk. And you could make it a determination yourself whether or not you think it was Forrest. And it's hard in some cases to see what he was writing because you're going to have to go and look at, like I did on um, Web Archive or the Wayback Machine. I'm not going to do all the, the research work for you. But if you're, if you're interested, go back and you'll see the context. So here he is. And, and by the way, this is going in descending order of dates. So this was the very last time he posted in 2018. Now, remember, I said a year. So it was 2019 that I contacted him and said, hey, you didn't post it for a year. right? So he's talking to Beavertooth here. I don't know about the topic, but he's talking. You're just nitpicking. Lighting a candle, lighting and burning a candle 
are the same thing. Do you really believe that that you can light a candle and it won't burn? Or burn a candle without lighting it? When did I insist that my interpretation, and I assume he's talking about uh, burning a candle at both ends, was the only interpretation? I simply offered an explanation to someone, and you went off on the deep end. And incidentally, I think they were going to ban that man at this point. Beaver Tooth is literally clueless, as were many, many people on Chase that. They, they couldn't figure out what I'm figuring out here. So anyway, he says the word prayers was never used or implied. That's just putting your own beliefs in where they don't belong. And when did you become an expert on forest intentions? Lighten up, no pun intended. Dude, that's the kind of thing that Forrest Fenn would say. Here we go. He's talking the legacy helper. Forrest uses a lot of old timer talk. The actual saying is burning a candle at both ends. Burn a candle at both ends is an idiom meaning to exhaust yourself, especially being up late and early to work. To work semicolon. <laughs> To work extremely or excessively hard, semicolon. To work too hard for good health or peace of mind. That's all it means, nothing more. Now think about that in terms of being exhausted and how that would apply to tired and weak. I'm kind of adding my little tidbits in there of what I get from things. You can get whatever you want out of it. So anyway, here's Becky's telling him how to solve the thrill of the chase. Find the hints, marry them to the clues, find treasure location. According to FF, that's the correct way. Stick to the book. FF certain words. You need to stop guessing and making this harder than it needs to be. And here's Matman51 agreeing with her 100%. And the reason why this came up is that I think people were reading the poem and trying to marry them to the map without first using the hints. Okay. What matters is what Forrest said, not what you think. So Becky, from WB was kind of telling somebody that, and Matt Man agreed with her. Here he's replying to thrilled to Chase. The fact that you claim to be brilliant shows that you are not humble. <laughs> it's out of context, but that's the kind of talking that Forrest does when he's not he doesn't have his politically correct filter on. I know that. I've showed these to people that have personally been in Forrest Friend's house. And I talked to them a couple of years ago, and they were blown away. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's Forrest. Here he goes to Tom. How could you possibly know that you have four clues correct? The only way to know if you have the first clue correct is by finding the chest. I think you're just wishful thinking. Hey, whatever. He's just stressing the fact that you have to solve the first clue before you're going to know that you have any of the other ones correct. And that gets to me, again, by doing... The two phase thing. First, you have to use the poem to solve for the first clue. Then, when you go back, you apply the other clues to that location. Here he goes to Gruber. If you don't like being what's being said on another site, then don't go there. Problem solved, as you said. If you do, you only have yourself to blame. Do you really think it's a good idea to drag the problems from another site over here? What good does that do? Show some class and give it a rest. Here, and I think this is funny, the person he's replying to was complaining about the site called Harry's. And basically here, he's telling him, then don't go to Harry's um, because, you know, all you're getting is controversy. And Forrest was kind of get pissed off that I don't think he liked anybody at Harry's, to be honest with you, except for a handful of people that were smart. Uh, uh, for example, you know, maybe um, Chris Yates, a couple other people. I don't think he liked Harry and a couple other ones, but who am I to decide that? That's my personal opinion. Anyway, he did not like the drama that was going on. And what was happening during this time was they were going back and forth. Harry would post something bad about Chase Chat. Chase Chat would post something bad about Harry. And for his friends, you know, like, this place sucks, basically. Um, so let's go on. Here he goes to the same period. Because... Again, it's the same person was starting to, to argue back and forth with what was going on. Like, seriously, what a, a total waste of time and effort to start a thread here to complain about another blog site. Petty, to say the least. I don't even know how to pronounce this name 
Mr. Magic Rove R- Rumble or whatever. Why would you go to search an area without having so- first solved the poem? Forrest Friend said, I warned that the path would not be direct for those with no certainty. Now remember that. I provided certainty. I provided reassurance in my psalm where I know that I located the correct place for warm water salt. The evidence is in the poem. So anyway, I warned that the path would not be direct. What he means by that is you're not going to be able to go directly to a map, look at the clues as they are in a poem, and then go to your spot. You're going to have to solve for where warm water salt. Otherwise, you have nothing. I warned that the path would not be direct for those who had no certainty of location beforehand. But sure for the one that did. Sure. Like reassured. If you do not know exactly where the chest is before you go, then you are just wasting your time and money. Also, saying that we we would probably not understand the significance of our own ideas is very condescending. Apply back to the same guy, a guy again. Unless you know exactly where the chest is, how could you possibly tell how close or how far away from it you are? Oh, I remember this one. This guy was saying that he was like right on top of the chest. That was like two feet away. So Forrest came back and he's like, unless you know exactly where the chest is, how could you possibly know how close or far away from it you are? Tell me exactly how close you are to my house. You can't unless you know where I live, right? Here goes the Paul B. Paul B was claiming that the treasure is only in our mind. The chase is a hoax. No physical places matter. Forrest Fram, or Matman 51 wow. I don't think I ever seen such a large pile of pure crap. Anyone who listens to this foolish crap should quit the hunt now. Well, at least we know who's not going to find it, LOL. Here he goes to Toby. And I think this was Toby from AGK. And what, what Toby was saying was that he's tired of people that claim they found it. Toby replied also to that magic guy. And basically, Matman51 here is saying he agreed 100%. Okay, now here he is talking to the Count. Um, I don't know what the Count said, but you might be able to draw the context from here. This is all Matman. I agree 100%. In Philly, a city bus was headed to a garage for maintenance when it crashed into a lamppost. It was mentioned on the news that night. The next day, 29 people claimed that they were injured on the bus by the crash, and they were seeking damages. Video cameras on the bus showed that no one was on the bus, only the driver. All 29 people who filed the claims were arrested and charged with fraud. True story. This, I think, was back when they were talking about suing Forrest for the hoax and the lawsuits were beginning back in 2017. And Forrest basically, I think, was um, offering a, an opinion on those uh, crazy nut jobs out there that are. That created the lawsuits. They're ambulance chasers. Here he goes again, and this one I do have the person he replied to. Jay Smith wrote, I should mention that I have not read The Thrill of the Chase, so if there's, there is a Montana, Montana secret in the book, all four lines in that first stanza could point to the same state. Matman 51, my suggestion, get the book. It will change how you see the poem. That reinforces again why I think that using the hints was useful, and that was one of the reasons why, this is 2017, that I decided to research the poem more and see how it can be used as a table of contents. Because as you know, Thrill of the Chase does not have a table of contents. So what if Warm Waters halted in the book? What if I, As I Was Alone in There was in the book? You know, The Canyon Downs in the book, so on and so forth. You could find out where forests, what, and it's never going to be direct. Um, this is where the cognitive bias and the uh, subjective evidence comes in. You have to be really careful when you're going through the book. Like I said in my videos, uh, and then in parentheses here, the stuff that Jack lifted, in my opinion. Um, you have to be really careful. You have to know how Forrest Friend thinks. You got to find it by looking in there. Um, now here he's replying to Simon Says. Simon Says wrote, nope. He has a lot of faith the finder will contact him. Why? Use your imagination. 
I agree 100%. I don't know exactly what this is in reference to. I think the person said that how does Forrest Fenn know to, to find her or contact them when it's found? Um, I believe there's something in there that would entice you to contact Forrest Fenn. That's one of the ways. Also, the proxy theory I had. I'm surprised Jack didn't lift that one again, in my opinion. But my opinion, again, is based on listening to what Jack said on AGK. And then go back and watch all of my old videos if you want to. I'm not going to do it for you. A lot of people don't want to do any work, but that's up to you. A lot of you have. And if you do, you know what I'm talking about. So here he's talking to Decal about a picture of the Arkansas River. It was a really trash picture somebody posted, and they thought their solve was there. And Decal was saying, um, are people really expecting to find a treasure in this god-awful place? His name is Forrest Fenn. The TC will be found in the forest, probably in a fen. Look that up. Mattman51, I agree with you, Decal. He did say the treasure was surrounded by trees. This person who posted that picture didn't uh, have any trees or anything, and it was just in an airplane with a river going through it, the Arkansas River. Um, here we go to Gordon Lightfoot, I think. Um, he, uh, you don't have Gordon's post here, but what he says, hello, Gordon. For what it's worth, Forrest said he doesn't answer emails about the sob being correct or not. So you'll pro you will not be hearing from him on this matter. In the first two years, he would reply to a solve with, but where do warm waters halt? You must start there if you want to find the treasure. But he hasn't even do that any, he doesn't even do that anymore. I hope this helps you. <clears throat> oh, this, this is Gordon Lightfoot told him, I sent for his friend, the solve, quote unquote. I know it's the right spot, blah, blah, blah. So Forrest basically tell him that Forrest will not reply to a solve other than to ask you where warm waters halt. We all know that. Reminds you again, you must start there if you want to find the treasure. Okay, here's that notice on where warm waters halt. Now think about that, guys. Try the wheel. Getting confidence, knowing for fact that you're in the right place, evidence. And I'm going to lift that from Jack. Jack used the word evidence. That's good. That's correct. That's exactly what we showed Jack how to extract from the poem and how to correlate it to the hints in the book using the poem. But I digress. Here he goes to Debbie Downer. Your analogies lack context, Debbie Donner. Why am I not surprised you would claim we have no context? Now you're just grasping at straws, using extreme cases to try and make a very point, a very weak point. You know, like compares Forrest Friend to putting a great treasure to Ford putting out the Pinto. Like the Pinto was the only Ford ever made that anyone ever died in. Do you really think those are both the same thing? A treasure or a piece of shit car? Your my practice analogy is just embarrassing. Time to give it a rest and just move on. Um, and I'm not going to go through this one because it's kind of uh, the same. It's it's the same discussion. You'll see it in the. He, he basically he's talking about maybe you should go sue Walmart for selling a cheap raft. Now he's he's obviously referring to the guy from Colorado that smoked crack and then decided to go with a bunch of strangers um, in Class 5 Rapids in Colorado after having smoked crack and purchased a Walmart raft. Needless to say, he died. People that he was with left him. It was a sad thing. But for his point here, is like everyone that died in the chase, it was because of their own, their own, you know, making a stupid move, their own Darwin, right, reward. So that's the point he's trying to make up here. And don't do silly things like buy a raft at Walmart. But instead of dealing with this, people were trying to sue him, the families and the people that died, the ambulance chasers, people claiming that they got their computer hacked, yet they were looking in the wrong state. Because in a legal document that I actually prove in one of my videos, I actually have a link to it, Forrest Fenn not only said that it was in the state of Wyoming, on Dow's website, it's one of the er Erskine court documents that Forrest sent to the judge 
in August of 2020 that says that the finder found the chest in Wyoming. He, he brought it to me in Santa Fe. And after a close examination, I determined that is the same treasure chest that I hid in Wyoming back in 2010. Clear cut and dry, the chest was in Wyoming. Here we, we got one from McFly talking about a word that is key. It's one word that is essential. I'm 100% positive. For his friend agrees. Uh, I don't know who this comment was to, but he's saying, you clearly do not have the first word clues or you wouldn't be asking where to put in. Now, it's interesting when you think about that because he's telling them that you don't have even the first four, two clues correct. And he's telling you that, you know, you it, by the time you get to the fourth clue, you know where to put in. Um, any, anything you need to see, you can see on Google Earth. And that includes the wheel, by the way. What you can't see on Google Earth is the blaze that's boots on the ground and the chest. This is just a general comment. Yellowstone is 2 million acres, blah, 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 one acre is. You're, you're looking for one square foot, 96 billion square feet. So here, you know how Forrest Friends signs all of his posts with a lowercase ff. Forrest said this once on Dallas, too. He goes, I guess setting the shift key and F twice was too much work. Here's another one. Uh, I doubt that fan literally worked on the pump for 15 years. It's far more likely that he started it and then finished it 15 years later. That was something that um, Forrest Fenn wrote, and he replied to somebody, and unfortunately, I was not able to find out who. The account was, whoever it was, was deleted, whoever posted something. So his, his entire reply is all of this. So, so Forrest wrote this part, too. I doubt Fenn... Literally worked on a poem for 15 years. It's far more likely that he started it and it finished it 15 minutes later. If I set out to replace all the boards on my deck, after replacing a few, I stopped. 10 years later, I decided to finish the deck once and for all. Now, did it actually take me 10 years to do the job? No. It took one day spread out over 10 years. Um, this is, a, I guess, might be the same guy he's talking to, but I couldn't find out who it was. Just wondering, how many correct answers to the treasure's location do you think there are? When the poem says the answers I already know, I believe he's talking about the answers to the nine clues. Just an opinion. Um, here he's talking to Chris Yates. If I ask you how far it is to Miami, you ask me from where? With multiple starting points, you're going to get multiple answers as well. And that includes the poem, in my opinion. From Boston, from Denver, Seattle, Dallas, Chicago, each different starting point will give you a different answer. If I tell you that there is only one correct answer for how far it is to Miami, then you would have to know the correct starting point, right? I believe the poem is straightforward and too many people overcomplicate it, but to each their own. So in other words, that's why I say again, the poem, Forrest had to be sure to give you the exact starting point. And I believe he was annoyed because only a few people knew how to get that. And Sam Smith was one of them. You have to use the poem itself. <laughs> Um, and that's why most people can't get first to first, past the first two clues, because figure out the starting place to decode exactly where Warm Waters halts. And then once you, you once you've done that, the only reason why the the girl from uh, India can't get there is because you can't drive. Because he also said the bo little boy in Texas. So it doesn't have anything to do with she can't fly over the water. It, all it is is you're too young to drive. They just can't go there. Here's another one. Question. Uh, is warm water halt the first clue? Forrest friend describes back to uh, Donkey Smoocher. <laughs> yes, it is. After about a year into the chase, a friend of mine sent Forrest to sob. Forrest's reply to them was, but where do warm water halt? You must start there if you want to find a treasure. He has sent this word for word to several other people, and that says it all. Where and then this phrase here, he started adding that as his um, tagline on Chase Chat, where one more salt, don't leave home without it. And here we go. He's talking to somebody named Lost Al, and I remember this guy. They had a big fight, not Forrest, but 
this guy, this troll that was on Jay's chat, lost Al. Um, so far, it's just going back. And he, he just proved my point again. As much as I enjoy a good battle of wits, it would, it would not be fair to fight you since you are completely unarmed. <laughs> One post of substance is worth a thousand empty-headed ramblings. So please, by all means, show off your ignorance and post away. That's for us, man, folks. That's for us, man. Oh, I know. I remember it just because this is going backwards in time. Lost Al was complaining. He, he knows everything because of his post count. Yeah, whatever. He goes, he, he, he was talking to uh, somebody that only had a, a couple of posts. And, he, and he's like, you only posted like two or three times. And Forrest is like, or Matt Man 51 replied, uh, post count. That's how you measure someone. Free lesson for you. For, for, free lesson for you, Lost Al. Semicolon. Better to be silent and thought of the fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Boy, Forrest, man. When he's political, politically correct filter is off, he would sound like that. That's what I'm told from people that know him, that met him. I never per met him in person, but that's kind of how he would talk. Uh, this was to somebody that was complaining about Lost Al. Mattman51, I agree 100%. It's a shame that the site has gone so far downhill. There used to be a lot of smart people here trying to solve problems. Now it's just nutcases posting threads for every stupid thought they have. No wonder Dow's site was far more, more popular. They didn't allow morons to disrupt everything. Now, look at the timing of this. Remember how I told you at the beginning of this video that it was 2016 when Jenny's site started? And, and what I said to Dow, his site wasn't threaded. And I basically, Chase Chat is basically a cesspool. We don't have a place to post. So, bam, there comes Jenny's in 2016. And from 2017 on, we had Jenny's. The problem is Jenny is a little bit too strict, and she's a far left-leaning person. She gets easily upset, which is how I ended up getting banned, because you know me. I didn't curse or do anything like that, but she said that I was posting too much and I was coming off as I was scaring people <laughs> because I, I posted a lot. Um, and basically, I said, well, you know, screw you. And then she blocked, banned me. Um, but so that luckily, you know, Thor came around thanks to K-Pro. And then that became the place to post. And when I left Jenny's, pretty much the place died. Here's replying to, replying to Tim. They were discussing two can keep a secret. And uh, Matt Man says, uh, um, Tim, hey, Tim, ask him. He'll probably tell you the same thing that he told Lorraine Mill in report from Santa Fe interview. That was an old mafia saying. Here he is to M. Davis, 19. Uh, while that sounds interesting, I disagree with you on one thing you said, quote, the poem is a description of how to get from anywhere to one particular spot. Uh, Matt Man 51 says, I believe the poem tells you how to get from one exact spot. Notice he says this, from one exact spot to another exact spot. This is phase one. Determine where warm water salt. Try the wheel. This is the second one. Go there and use the clues and the information on site to find out exactly where the chest is. And I show you how to do that. Anyway, he says, I feel you're a reasonable person. So let me offer you this. Uh, this is that uh, if I ask you, how far is it from here to there? Notice what he says here, too. How far is it from here to there? And what's in the poem is I've gone alone in there. Begin it where? Well, where and there our beloved home of Brown. So here, just just look at it. Or it's, it's kind of you know you gotta you gotta look at the poem. You really gotta think. You might say, well, that depends on where here is, right? I reply with, here, here is the starting point, and there is where you were trying to get to. Agreed? Okay. So without knowing where here is, you have no cho chance of ending up to the correct there. This is what Forrest has been trying to pound into everyone. He had said it countless times. Start where warm water salt. This gives you the here, and then you follow the rest of the poem to get you to the correct there. 
So many people waste time trying to figure out Homer Brown, No Police to Me, and all the other lines in the poem without having the start here figured out. As Forrest Gump would say, that's all I have to say about that. Think about what he just put out there. And remember, these people, I don't like this guy too much either, but these people had no idea that this was Forrest. And we're back in 2016. He's talking in the public for everybody to see. But very few people knew it. And that's because very few people are good detectives. Um, I don't know who this person is. Minnie Eftskin, please present a logical explanation as to why modern or contemporary facilities should not be considered. Batman 51 said, well, because Forrest Fence said the treasure is not associated with any structure. As you know, this is Matman again, Dr. Pepper was invented in 1885, Waco, Texas, which is not far from where Forrest grew up in Temple. In Central Texas, every kid drinks it. Always have, always will. The 10 to 4 were the times of the day that Dr. Pepper said you should drink it. All this information and 50 cents will get you a bottle. That was what Matt Man said. Sound like Forrest? Yep. By the way, the good stuff is coming now. The stuff related to Sam Smith and everything. That Sam was not aware of this until I showed it. Forrest Fan again. Eliza, he's talking to. I, if I may offer you this, saying that where Warm Water Halt is a hot spring is far too general. It as it does not give you a starting point. Remember, he's talking about exact starting points over and over. If I say to you to go to the Rocky Mountains and start on a mountain, your first thought might be, which mountain? There's thousands of mountains there. Which one did he mean? But if I said, go to you, go to the Rocky Mountains and start at Pikes Peak, then you have a more precise, precise place to start. Now think about that in context of try the wheel again. Using a, now this part two, using a known landmark as a starting point seems more likely, well, to me anyway, would you agree? It would also tell you which map you need. A map of New Mexico isn't going to help you if the starting point is in Colorado. These are just examples. Well, that's my two cents for what it's worth. Again, people, I'm telling you the try to wheel stuff. You have to know precisely and be reassured where warm waters halt. Like I've been saying for years. And where Jack most likely lifted the starting location from. Again, that's my opinion. This is my channel. Just want to let you know. Um, if you want to try to sue me over my opinion, good luck. Also, I don't have anything, so you're wasting your time. Um, here we go again. Remember, this is getting better and better. 2015. Someone said it's at least 300,000 acres of legitimate area. To search. Now, I don't know who said that. This is one of them, once again, where the count was deleted. So, Matt Man replies If you're talking about Yellowstone, it's over 2 million acres. Since you know what you're looking for is going to be one square foot and 2 million acres, it should be a piece of cake, right? He's basically busting our chops because none of these people have precise starting points. They're going to random locations. That I don't know what that one was. She's talking to Decal. Is that a quote from Forrest? If so, where'd you find it? Decal was basically putting out information that, if I remember correctly, the context might still be on uh, way back. But he was basically going to uh, ask him, he's to ask him, prove it. Because Decal was saying something that Forrest actually never said. Here he goes, 2015, he's talking to IWG Golf. I don't know who the heck that is. Hello, IW Golf. I did not mean to ruffle your feathers. So rather than get into a blog argument over a 30 year old puzzle, I will retract all that I said and admit that I am 100% wrong. And you and Jack are both 100% right. Interesting that the guy's name is Jack. You'll see more of that in a second. Now we are all happy campers, right? Smile. Oh, I know what this was in reference to. Jack and this other guy, IWG Golf, were comparing this to the 1980s uh, Golden Horse treasure hunt. 
the one that was never solved until after it was over, and then the two FBI guys solved it. The one thing I have learned in my 50 plus years as a treasure hunter and as a treasure map designer, <laughs> oh, Forrest, is that people always overcomplicate the puzzles offered. You asked, please explain the page 72 rabbit card not being a cipher. Oh, uh, they thought a cipher was just keep in mind that I have not seen that book in almost 30 years. But if memory serves, the rabbit handed over her a card with a lot of symbols and numbers on it. And it said, here's a clue, but I will mask it. The clue was simply card. And the mask was everything written under the card. This is the perfect example of keep it simple, stupid. In the future, I'll be very careful in what I offer here. Okay, smile, wear one more all. Don't leave without it. All right, so here, I don't know, who, his name was just Jack. Yeah, or it could be a completely different Jack. Uh, you can figure that out. There's a task for you. So here's Mattman51 talking to Jack. I looked at the site you listed, and all I could say is that person was 100% wrong. There was no cipher involved, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the 10th Mountain Division. Everything he talked about on that site was wrong. The New York Times did a story on the solve after the treasure date expired. Remember, he's talking about the golden horse. This guy, Jack, said that he found information on the golden horse, and he thinks forest treasures work that way. But everything the guy, Jack, discovered was 100% wrong because the website was 100% wrong. Um, anyway, he's talking about the look in the New York Times and the story. After the treasure expired, their information was 100% right. So if you look at the New York Times, you'll find a true story to how the golden horse was solved. They got their information from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Smile. That person's webpage has all his opinion and nothing more. As we well, you well know, there are many websites that claim they have the answer to the thrill of the chase. But as we all know, they are all just somebody's opinion, and they are all wrong. That was in 2015. He's talking about all the websites being wrong. So 15 again, this is back to Jack. That information on the treasure to search for the golden horse is incorrect. The solution was at an old cemetery just south of Tennessee Pass on the Continental Divide. It was buried three feet down in a wooden box wrapped in an old plain shirt. When you found the cemetery, there were four stones around the outer edge, each with the letter T painted on them. When you lined up the four stones, it gave you an exact look of where to dig. I just want to set the record state. Now the real juice is coming. I put that there. Aha, uh -huh, Sam Smith. I, um, oof, I'm going to read this one in order from the bottom. It's kind of important. And I left a note up there. All right, so here's the bottom one. He, he was talking to Rick Novak. Rick, why do you care what others are doing? Maybe you should focus more on your own behavior and not worry about what others are doing. Just calling other searchers who are trying to meet and share their ideas, beggars, really give you dignity. P.S. General Custer did not die with dignity. He died a fool's death. That was in 2014. That was actually Madman 51's first post. Now, this part here is my note. Okay, Here's what he wrote to Sam Smith. Hello, Sam Smith. When are you planning to make your trip to your location? Wishing you a safe journey. Smiley face. Wear one more salt. Don't leave without it. Now, Sam Smith, of course, replied back to him, and he goes, you know, whenever I'm going, and we're, we knew he was going to Wyoming. We knew there wasn't no water there. Okay. Thanks for the reply. Not that it matters, but I'm not far from Wyoming. I'm in the Mile High City. Smile. Remember, like I said, if you look, he followed mostly everybody with his aliases that was looking in Wyoming. And he seemed to have something for Sam Smith here. Now, remember my El Jefe, which happened a year and a half before this date, or a year before this date, El Jefe, who I believe was for his friend. Um, here we go. Sam Smith, of course, replied to him. I didn't put that here. You can see it online. It's still there. Well, Sam Smith, just wondering. When you said the weather, 
You say the weather is good in Wyoming. Is that Wyoming or West Yellowstone? Also, if you don't mind me asking, did you use anything in the book for your sob or the poem only? Thanks. Smile. Unfortunately, I don't I don't have to post it. Sam said, I think Sam said, said accommodation of both. But basically, he got the, the book first. And he told them that I'm extremely confident that my where warm water salt is correct. And this is the first time I'm going boots on the ground to my area. Now, remember, he had told Forrest Fenn about that. And I believe he did not tell Forrest Fenn who his partner was. He just said that I have a partner that I met on um, Chase Chat. And then both of us together, we're going we're gonna to figure out the wheel. And we were going to figure that out. So, so Forrest knew, and I believe Forrest is also El Jefe. Clearly, Sam didn't know that. So he gave Forrest friend a sob, and I don't think his sob was complete. Uh, we know his sob was wrong because he didn't find it. I know that Sam was looking near Porcupine Falls. Him and his wife spent, I believe, a week there. And they looked up by the wheel and they, uh, uh, a little bit, but he was mostly focused on Porcupine Falls and Bucking Mule. That's where they spent their time. And, of course, he didn't find it there. But keep that in context. Knowing the fact that we know Forrest Fenn knew that. I know he emailed Forrest. And he told him where he was going. During the same time. And that was Samson's first time there. Forrest Fenn knew his entire sob. But Sam Smith focused on the fact that the only thing I'm 100% sure of is where warm water salt. Remember that. Because Sam was, Sam got stuck on that where one would assault since 2000, late 2012, early 2013, and, and he never backed away from that. The problem is he didn't have much money and he was sick. So he couldn't afford to go often. And when he did go, he had to bring an oxygen tank. So it was very hard. Sam's had a hard time. And I think when he emailed Forrest, Forrest even convinced him, why don't you, you know, pick up a partner that could help you with the boots on the ground? sometime in their back and forth discussion. And Sam Smith eventually stopped emailing for us and he started looking for a partner. And that's where I was one of the partners that was picked about a year and a half later on 2015, 2016. Okay, that's how all that worked out. Yeah, this is to Milan, this is not for uh, Sam Smith. Milan, well said, to offer any part of a solution without the treasure in possession. It's just foolish. Einstein once said, I have I have know of only two things that are infinite, the size of the universe and the stupidity of humans. And I am sure I am not the first one. My advice to Plato, and for what it's worth, it's better to remain silent and thought of a fool than thought. I think that was to another troll. Uh, Milan was complaining about it, about the troll. And then, of course, is basically sticking up for Milan. If that's Forrest, I keep I keep saying Forrest. Whenever I say Forrest, I mean Matt Man Fifty One. Here's one to Larsonist, and Larsonist ranted a lot. I personally don't like Larsonist, but I do have to admit that he was a pretty good thinker. That used to be on there, and Chris Yates, and a bunch of other people, Sam Smith, Time Bandit, um, and probably including Mike uh, Calazars. All those people are on there. Since way back before way before Carlos Arts even had the channel. So Larson is so Mike did a rant and you were offended by it. So did you rant about his rant? How is that not the pot calling the kettle black? Lighten up. So he was complaining that Larson was complaining about somebody else that was complaining about ranting on the forum. This is when the place started to get turned to a cesspool, by the way. Back around twenty fifteen. It didn't last long. It only took two years before Stephanie and the gang destroyed the place. Um, okay, now we're back to Sam Smith again. And now we're in 2015. Sam had been back from Boots on the Ground, and I guess that he's mentioned to, just in general, he was chatting with other people. He said that he didn't find the chest, but he said he's still 100% confident in his world where, where uh, warm water's hot, right? But he's, he's confident that most of his sob is right. So Matt Man replies to Sam Smith with Sam Smith's comment saying, Hello, Sam. I was just wondering about something. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But 
I thought you said that you sent Forrest a solution to the poem. And Forrest reminds him, as of December 31st, 2014, Forrest said that no one sent him a correct solution beyond the first two clues. So if you sent him your answer and he said, as of that date you mentioned, that nobody sent him the correct solution, do you still believe you are correct? I'm just wondering. And Sam Smith went back to him, and that was the last one, because he didn't he didn't post to Sam anymore at that point. But basically, Sam Smith went back to him, and he goes, "No, he goes. The only part that I'm sure is correct is that I'm putting in at the right place at the wheel. Uh, wheel is where warm waters halt, and I know my home of Brown is right, and and all of that stuff. But he goes, unfortunately, the rest of my solve is wrong, and that I believe is why Matt Man started talking to him." And he was curious whether Sam was going to blow off his whole sob or was he only going to blow off the ending. Well, as we know, history showed that Sam Smith only blew off the ending. And eventually he solved it in 2019 and he told Forrest that. I believe Forrest asked him to get a partner again. He contacted me in January 2020, asked me if, if it, asked me if he want to partner up again. And would my partner in Wyoming go get the test? My partner in Wyoming agreed. I told Sam, give me the rest of the winter to work on your sob. Not that I don't believe your final location, but I want to find other alternatives. And during the next five months is when I found other alternative. And one of them was at the location of the tree that I showed. Now, somebody said, I thought you thought that was the right solution. No, I didn't. I say in that video that that's the last one that I sent to Forrest in May before he asked me to stop emailing me because I believe that he knew people were neck to neck and that's why he did the toe to toe contest. So he wanted to break off all communication with anybody that he knew was close. Okay. So I know that Saab was wrong because we went boots on the ground and proved it was wrong. It wasn't until June 8th. Two days later, after I spoke with somebody that sent me a PayPal donation and told me they were the ones who solved the poem and that they used Try the Wheel to solve it. And they gave me one hint. And that hint was to take a look at the Bonco or the bench up at the Overlook. I looked at it and immediately I knew. I'm like, I talked to Forrest about Five Springs, and we put it off. But I, I went immediately with Sam, and I'm like, dude, the treasure chest is in Five Springs. And then that's, it was already two days too late that we discovered that. So over the next couple of days, I went and I made a video, and I figured out where it was. And in July of 2020, I pointed out a location at Five Springs Upper Falls. And that's how all that came about. That's where I thought that it was. And what happened was somebody did some drone footage that I discussed about in my other videos. And I discovered that somebody died at that position. A female hiker fell to her death right at that waterfall. So if Forrest Fan, actually that would, if Forrest hit it in August of 2010, he would have hit it before she fell and died. So I think the rescuers would have found it if it was at the waterfall. So I went and back to Sam with that, and I'm like, I don't think it was at the waterfall. And Sam goes, I don't think it was there either, but it could be. He goes, but I think it was further upstream. And that's when Sam talked about the trail that end at the end of uh, Forest Road 651. And that's how we get at my most recent video. <clears throat> if you want, I could do another video that shows you information that I've, I've never told anybody. <clears throat> I did tell Sam, but since we're no longer really looking down by the falls, I never told anybody about that part. But a couple of people did ask me, well, how did you know that it's an eye? What gave you an idea that it's the forest? It's the uh, medicine man's eye that is the blaze that's boots on the ground, the eye of wisdom. I can show you how I came up with that idea. 
And the reason why I think that idea is true is because the information that El Jefe gave Sam Smith, I believe he only gave him enough to uncover Try the Wheel, which is enough to get you to wear warm water salt. I don't think that El Jefe, before he disappeared two days after telling Sam Smith how to reveal Try the Wheel, he didn't explain to Sam how to figure out the rest of the poem. And he didn't tell him, which I believe that there actually is a second part. The first word that is that was key, the word that is key is treasures. But there's a way to find out the blaze using the poem itself that I uncovered in 2020. And I told Forrest Fenn that I was uncovering that. I gave him that information. That was one of the things that we were actually looking at when we went to the tree. But now we know that that was probably down by the the waterfalls or at the end of the 651 trail. And I'll probably do a video to show that to you because, as I said, if Jack ain't going to talk, I'm going to talk. And I'm giving you the best, most convincing evidence that it was there that I can. And I can almost assure you that a lot of the stuff I'm talking about, because I never mentioned it before, I know he didn't know about Matman 51. I know he didn't know about El Efe. I know he didn't know what the blaze was on the ground. I did, but I didn't mention it to anybody except for Forrest Fenn and Sam. And I, of course, didn't put any videos that shows you how to determine what the blaze is. Now, now let me remind you, I'm not talking about the sun. The sun is the blaze that leads us down to the intersection of the creek and the beam of sunlight, okay? And, and the trail that we're on, it tells you where to hang a left and go downstream, okay? But, it, but that part doesn't tell you what the blaze is that the sun is shining down on, right? And neither did El Jefe. I figured it out. And then I went back and told Sam, and it seems to all make sense. So I'll probably do a video about that. But there's no way on earth that Jack knew that. Jack also doesn't know El Jefe's real name. And I'm also, as usual, leaving some information out of this video because I, I want to make sure that if Jack tries to pull a fast one, I have something up my sleeve. Um, and I'm not trying to be combatant with Jack. I'm not trying to go against him. I'm just really annoyed that clearly he had help with his solution. The only thing he did on his own was solve the ending. And he legitimately owns the chest. Me, Sam, nobody else is entitled to any of the, the treasure that he found because it's his. It's legitimate. We put this stuff out there willingly, and now that the chase is over, I'm going to give you all the information that I have, a lot of it that I know Jack doesn't know, and my stuff is extremely compelling, and it's evidence, and I have yet to see any solution that even comes close to this, that doesn't use anagrams, doesn't have ciphers, doesn't remove spaces or anything from the poem. No punctuations removed, no words are changed, no synonyms are used. The poem is read from left to right, top down, okay? No, it's not reorganized where I read the last stanza first and then jump back up to the top. It's, it's all straightforward. It's just that you have to read the poem twice. The first one is only to get the precise location of where warm water salt. Once you have that, it becomes a simple matter of go to that site, read the clues in the poem, Look at the map of the wheel, just like Forrest Man said, and solve it when you find, when you reach the end of the wheel. Find a sunlight, look quickly down the sun, and then follow it to where it intersects the creek and the canyon, both with the same name, down there when you look there. That is the closest one. Drive there, put in, go to the creek, go get the chest. I mean, it's very straightforward, like Jack says. But it wasn't straightforward to him. It took him 25 Days, not the same consecutive days, but 25 days of boots on the ground searching. Why? Because he didn't know how the poem ended and he didn't understand how Try to Wheel worked. He really didn't solve the clues. Because let me tell you something although El Jefe gave uh, Sam Smith the information, Sam never broke the poem down grammatically and actually analyzed how it works once he got beyond 
the point that that reveals try to wheel. I did that, and I came up with an exact meaning of every single line. And that is the information that I never put out until recently. So if I would have went and found it, I would have went there and got it in 25 minutes. It wouldn't take me 25 days. And even if the blaze is destroyed, I still have the sun pointing me in a general direction. And I would have found it. I'm smart enough to know Forrest didn't go a mile down that creek. All right. He walked to that creek, which is less than a mile. And then he went maybe two, 300, 400 feet, maybe 500 feet along the creek. And that's as far as you need to go. The, the only place I may be wrong is that instead of going downstream, you go upstream. But anyway, I'll talk about that in the next video. I hope you all enjoyed this and have a great weekend. And there you go. That's my breaking news. Have fun. Go and research this. And if you like it, please click like and please subscribe. That's it. Have a cool weekend. And Jack, please give out the solution. I'm coming out with more and more information. And I'm gonna I'm going to, if I can, get this out there in the major media. And you're gonna look really silly, or you're never gonna be able to come out with a solve. And I also want to remind you that if the solution is given out when you sell the chest it'll make more money for you for the chest because as every day goes by that you wait, the chest is dropping in value. Um, it's probably worth less than a million now, in my opinion, especially considering there's no solve, especially considering you won't give out any information and especially considering all the controversy surrounding you and the treasure. And I think that due to the AGK video, you've now been exposed as somebody who does not always tell all of the truth. Let's just put it that way. Peace.